I'm very uh, glad that so many people came tonight to this meeting. I'm very excited because, you know, I'm very excited over the last months because of the Sudanese revolution and also the revolution in Algeria. Uh, it really, really gives me a lot of energy to see those masses on the street uh, again. Um, welcome, my name is Ewart. I'm uh, active with International Socialist. Uh, we have organized this evening together with uh, uh, Exodus Evenings, uh, uh, Sounds of Silence and Rue Paré Community. This is the building we are in uh, this evening. Um, so for tonight we will talk about uh, at first the developments in Sudan, the revolution, uh, and also the counter-revolution and the brutal violence we have, we have seen. And in the second part of the meeting we will talk about uh, our situation here in the Netherlands and what way the Dutch state is involved, but also how we can organize solidarity with the Sudanese revolution. Um, just for me, and, you know, over the last months, seeing all the images of uh, Sudan, it really, really impressed me. Uh, I think the numbers on the streets, uh, the, the, the radical action, the, the, the impressive uh, strike action uh, in April, um, the way they got the dictator out um, and under conditions which are so violent. I mean, this regime uh, was responsible for killing 300,000 people in Darfur and against this regime people dare to stand up, uh, stand up and the courage it takes for people to stand up under these circumstances. So I'm very much uh, uh, inspired. Um, and I'm also inspired because of, I mean, eight years ago we've seen the Arab revolutions, we saw Tunisia, we saw Egypt, uh, but we saw also the way that, it, that, uh, that the revolutions were turned back. In Egypt, after a year and a half, uh, after a very short-lived democratic experiment, the army got back into power. We saw in Bahrain how the people there were crushed by the Saudi state. Um, and also in Syria we saw how, how Assad really repressed the revolution. So I think this is really, you know, this really gives me hope that this, this kind of processes, people are still resisting against dictatorship, against the reasons of the economic hardship that people are experiencing. And this in a country in Sudan where there's also a long history of uh, revolution and resistance. So I'm really, really glad we can have this, uh, this evening. Um, I would like to introduce the first uh, speakers. Uh, so for the first part on the history of Sudan and the recent developments, um, I would like to ask Nusiba uh, and uh, Noor to also enter the stage and to give a brief presentation of the, the developments of the last uh, period. Please uh, give them a warm up. since the year uh, 1989 when Omar al-Bashir he came on the power on 30 of June and so since that date it's um, Sudanese people suffered a lot and for that reason now Omar al-Bashir he is um, required for committing crime against humanity and against Sudanese people uh, so just to give you a brief uh, about Sudan so this is Sudan map and uh, as you can see, uh, during Omar al-Bashir, while he was under power and leading the country, he actually, um, uh, regardless of killing people and create wars and murder, he also divided the country in, in two parts. So now we have uh, Sudan, as you see here, and um, uh, under you, we have South Sudan. And uh, this um, divided uh, was in 2011. 
and uh, now we are like we are two countries in the state of one country and we should be united um, also he committed a war in uh, Darfur 2012 uh, 2002 and uh, millions of people died actually they are and suffered a lot uh, many women get raped and yeah then suffering is increased every day until this moment we have at this moment and right now people who are suffering right now in Darfur and other parts of Sudan. And also in South Kurdufan when the war started in 2011. And uh, many uh, people from Nuba Mountains, and it's located in the uh, south of Kurdufan, had been suffered a lot. Uh, many children uh, being an orphan without uh, the parents, and also uh, women get raped and, and yeah, regardless of people who is missing for uh, until this moment, we don't know where are they exactly. And uh, also the war in Blue Nile and in the east of Sudan. So as General Omar al-Bashir and Sudan regime actually destroyed Sudan, uh, whatever part of it. If, say, uh, if you are from north or from south or being in Khartoum in the middle or in the capital city, so everywhere, if you are Sudanese, so you are just you just suffering. Uh, so 2013 also we had Sudan uprising where people decide that well we are not going to let this regime anymore to lead or to uh, control on us. So people went to street actually and they fought for their rights and they demand for the freedom. But as usual, uh, government respond in a violence and we have more than two two hundred people were killed. And as you can see here in the pictures, he's one of the people with the fresh age who, who, who died at uh, the demonstration of 2013. Until this moment, no one gets punishment from the government or from Sudan regime. So now uh, I'm going to give you a brief summary about Sudan revolution, which uh, took place uh, at um, last uh, December 2018. So it started on 19 December 2018, a serious uh, demonstration broke. And well, everybody, everybody said in the world that Sudanese people were really complaining about the cost of living or they demanding for to, to get like lower price. But for me as a Sudanese woman and as a part of Sudanese society, we know that is not the truth. Sudanese people, they will not only demand for bread or for oil or for like um, the normal needs of life, but they demand more about freedom and they, they want the right that had been taken for them away since the year 1989. And uh, so it starts for the first time at um, Atapara, which is a city at the north of Sudan. People were complaining and they went out of the street and they demand their rights, and then it comes to Madani, and then and it's also Madani, it's uh, also a city in Sudan, and then to Khartoum, and then it's crashed all over Sudan. If, if, uh, if I may interject here. Yeah. Um, uh, she, she spoke a bit about uh, people that went demonstrating in the beginning because of the cost of living, and I guess I saw the, in the most of the Western media that how, how it was broadcasted that it started as like a bread revolution or fuel revolution. And this is actually not the case because the problem is inherently political. It has nothing to do with economy. You cannot solve the economy part without solving the political part. So people went out and, and they were aware that uh, they are not, because it, it was not like a, like a short solution that tomorrow the bread price will go down and then everyone will return happy back to their, their homes. That was not the case. And, and people went out knowing that that should not be the case anyway. So, uh, so, so when, when they went out, uh, yeah, they said, we are not happy about all this rising prices, but we know that to get them back to, to the way it should be, you need to get out. So it has never been, and it never started as, 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 a, as, yeah, as, as a protest for, for, for goods or for, or for prices, but it has been from the beginning, it, it has a clear message that we want to change the regime and we went to get freedom. Yeah, uh, as he mentioned, he was totally right. 
uh, it's not a revolution for like starvations of Hungary. It's a revolution for freedom and revolutions uh, against racism and against war conflicts and everything that Omar al-Bashir and his regime has done to Sudanese people through 30 years. So uh, the demonstrations actually started on 19 of December and it continues every day. And uh, every day, uh, government react to the people by violence. And uh, as you, you, you saw, I'm sure you saw most of you uh, videos or photos about peaceful protesters who had been killed by, in a public uh, by the gunshots from the regime. Uh, so on 20, 22 of February 2019, um, our ex-president al-Bashir, uh, he declared a state of emergency in, in Sudan for three months. And like he was like telling people, uh, you cannot do anything more. And now we have like uh, an emergency situation in Sudan and everybody has to be in home. But that actually this announce, uh, announcement from him doesn't change anything, but it gives Sudanese people more power to stay and to fight in the streets. So on 6 April, uh, there were uh, there were massive protests for the first time since the declarations of a state of emergency. Like he was expecting that everybody now will calm down, and uh, but the result was totally uh, the opposite. So people were like demonstrating in a huge way in a moment that it was really really um, emotional for me and for. Um, anyone who saw how Sudanese people unite with each other and how do they insist that we want our rights and we want uh, every freedom that had been taken away from us because we as a nation deserve the better things in our life ever. So uh, on 11 April, the military removed Al-Bashir from the power, but they announced uh, Ibn Of, which is the one in the photo, that he will lead the country for two years and then after that we will have election. So people, they knew, Sudanese people, they knew that uh, Ibn Of, uh, he's the other face for al-Bashir because they, at the, at the end, they belong to the same regime. So it's not our problem as a Sudanese. With, it's, uh, our problem is not only with al-Bashir, but it's with the whole regime. So Ibn Of, he's just like another al-Bashir, so that's why people demonstrate again in a massive way and they demand that we want even Ibn Of to step down. So in the next day, he was in a power only for less than 24 hours and then in a less day, and the next day, uh, Ibn Of himself announced uh, uh, Al-Burhan as the president for the TMC, which is Traditional Military Council. Just one point I wanna make over here when she spoke about uh, the, the protest went on the 6th of April. Uh, it's, it's actually, it has a double meaning. So in, in 1985, the Sudanese people ousted a different dictator. And that happened on the 6th of April. And it was one of the most glorious days in our history. And, and there was parks named after it and, and, and everything. And, and after the, emer the state of emergency had been declared, people were looking forward that on the 6th of April, we will make another statement and we will go back again. And, and, and it had a double meaning that uh, as, as we, we were victorious before, we, we can be victorious again in the same day. And, and, and there was a lot of uh, energy in the street, energy within the people that the 6th of April will be the, the day. And, and, and we, they did not disappoint. Uh, no less than 2 million people went out on the street on that day and the government w were powerless to do anything. So they, they just sweeped over the streets. The police and, and, and the secret service, they were just too few to handle them. And uh, on, on the 6th of April, in the same day again, uh, after, uh, yeah, after four years, yeah, uh, they went and then they, they, they stood in front of the, the headquarter of the army. And then, and when they reached there, and I, I remember I was, we were in the heck. We, we were having a demonstration of our own to support them. And, and, and one of the guys was showing, yeah, we, we reached the headquarters of the army. No one could believe it. Not even the, the people who went protesting, they did not know that they can go that far. Uh, they never have been. They always go. And then after like, yeah, a couple of hundred of meters, they get dispersed by the, by, 
by the police. So this time when they arrived there, they said, all right, we're here. So we're staying, we're not leaving anymore. And, and, and then they stayed the sit-in. It, it was just spontaneous, it was not declared. No one knew that that would happen. Um, I remember myself, I, I was working with, uh, with a couple of organizations trying to help back home. And then on the next day, we, we, we were faced by a problem that thousands of people slept over there and no one knew how they can eat breakfast, how they will, how they will do, because no one was prepared for it, not even the leaders of the protest. And then people start, and, and it was like a, a, huge, uh, a huge sign of how, how intact is the Sudanese society. So, so just th there was immediately uh, people in their homes, housewives, uh, restaurants, and, and, and they said, yeah, we have food, you can take it, go to the city. And, and, and then 6 April became again the, the day of our, uh, our, our moral victory. Um, five days later, the military had no had no other uh, option than to to get rid of Al-Bashir, and well, uh, we're quite happy that he, he left, and I personally quite happy that I don't want to hear his name again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as I told you, people uh, <coughs> complain about Ibn Ob because he the other face for Omar Bashir, but we will. Uh, um, we were so su surprised about the announcement of Ibn Of when he selected Al Burhan to be to be the one who is uh, in charge to lead the TMC, and he's also another uh, face for Umar Al Bashir, and he's also the same face for Ibn Of. So um, all of them are actually the faces for the one currency. So there is no huge difference. That's why uh, Sudanese people were. Um, um, fighting for the rights again because our problem, uh, as I mentioned before, is not only uh, with Umar al-Bashir, it's with Umar al-Bashir and with the whole regime. So there is no huge difference if Umar al-Bashir is gone or not, um, as long as the regime is there, because uh, the whole regime who make the people suffer, not Umar al-Bashir alone. So after al-Bashir removal from the power, street protests organized by Sudanese Professionals Association uh, and all of you uh, associations and democratic oppositions group. And um, that Sudanese Professional Associations is, uh, is actually an umbrella uh, of 17 different Sudanese trade unions. And uh, most of them, uh, it's actually um, it started on October 2012, but they they couldn't register it due to the you know the control of the Omar al Bashir and his government. So you cannot uh, uh, build um, like a, a body that is totally against the regime. Uh, but in 2016, they were able to uh, to announce that we do have uh, an umbrella for all Sudanese people, and it actually contains from doctors, engineers, and from um, agriculture unions, from uh, journalists and from teachers. So it's like a huge umbrella for all the society and on behalf of Sudanese people they deal and they fight on our behalf. So many people, uh, especially during the demonstration, the last one, people were waiting for the for uh, Sudanese, for the SPA, because they decide uh, um, in which day that we will have demonstrations and in which street, I mean like in a general, they were um, organizing everything for, for Sudanese people and they are the ones who lead the, the uh, pro uh, protesting uh, in Sudan, like officially or in an official way. Um, so um, most of you uh, hear about uh, RSV and which is rabbit support forces and this is it's like a militia or gentawit and those people who committed crimes against humanity in Darfur uh, and the war in Darfur in 2002 until this moment. They are the people who killing, raping women and uh, destroying cities and burning uh, village in Darfur. And uh, their leader is uh, this one, the horrible face, Muhammad Hamdan Himeti. Uh, he's uh, now the Prime Minister for Al Burhan and, and they collaborate with him to make Sudanese people suffer more. So um, uh, so I, I was thinking just to give you a brief uh, summary about to, to, to let anyone know what is rabbit support forces. In the last attack 
uh, in ser uh, 3 of June, the 3rd of June 2019, we have like more than 180 people were attacked, peaceful protesters, and they were uh, dead, all of them. And we have more than 613 people get serious injured. And we also have uh, more than 14 dead bodies that found in uh, River Nile. And we have like more than 100 people missing. And all these numbers is according to the Sudanese Medical Cen uh, Center. And uh, all, all those people who had been killed or also we have women uh, get raped. Uh, we have 22 women, among them that we have two doctors. Uh, they were um, um, at the day of the attack. They were helping and they were protesting though the attack just happened suddenly because it, uh, they planned for, for it very well and people and peaceful protesters were just attacking so we lost all those people. And the uh, one who is in charge is TNC, which is Traditional Military Council, with the collaborations of uh, Rabbit Support Forces and uh, Muhammad Hamdan Himeti. Um, he's the one who is responsible from all the violence against humanity for the last, um, yeah, it's, it's really very painful. Regardless of um, violence and um, rape and all these um, really painful actions, I'm so proud of being a Sudanese woman because Sudanese women, they really, um, they were like miracles. Um, and they were like angels uh, during the protesters. They really actually lead protectors. They were in every way. So that's why um, I want to talk, uh, to talk to you about uh, the role of women, Sudanese women in a revolution. How do they contribute? How do they work with each other? And how do they, um, they have done a lot of great things. So, um, and unfortunately that we, we do have women that got raped in the, in, the, in the last demonstrations. And we know as a Sudanese that uh, Sudanese women, they had been suffering a lot um, from Darfur till Blue Nile and South Kurdufan and parts of East. And they, they don't have the, the power or they don't have the, the um, they don't have the, the rights for a lot of things, but in this revolution, they prove for us and for everybody the opposite. They were in the same line with the men, fighting and demanding for their rights, and they were helping by cooking, by um, painting, by uh, creating um, uh, really uh, uh, create, uh, creative works. And uh, as you know, this is Allah Salah, and she is one of the women who is really inspiring for this revolution, and there is millions and millions of Allah Salah in, in this room that we have a beautiful Sudanese women who also contribute in these revolutions abroad, and they are here today, so I'm really, I'm really proud of you all, and um, yeah, it's my really, my honor to be a Sudanese woman, and uh, Sudanese women not only contribute in Sudan, but also outside Sudan, they will organize uh, demonstrations every, in every way, in every city. They were writing topics, they upload photos, and they activate Twitter, and they were demanding a lot that, well, people, we have a uh, problem in Sudan, and we are, we are Sudanese people, we, are des we deserve a better life, that's why we are complaining. So you can see here, um, yes. More photos about Sudanese women, and it shows their roles. How do they stand with the men in the same line and demanding for their rights? Um, this is some photos from uh, 6 April demonstrations. When the train actually came from Atbara in the North Sudan to Khartoum to to participate in the in the demonstrations, and for that reason, the Umar al Bashir had stepped down because as and Noor said more than five million were protesting in the same day in a way that the, the place wasn't enough for everybody really because everyone was um, out of the streets. No one stayed at home actually in that day. So um, for people who want to know what does the revolution stand right now, as you know, um, on 5 of July, they reached uh, an agreement between TMC and Sudanese Professional Association, 
and the uh, agreement that um, for me as a nociba and it's my personal opinion is not satisfied is not satisfied for the um, it doesn't really express about the revolution and for me personally this revolution had been stolen yet if we did not do anything about it if we keep silent as we, we did for the last 30 years then we will have the same scenario that happened in Egypt revolutions and everybody knew that Egyptian people they had a great revolution but at the end they turned the table on their face and me as a Nusiba and as a Sudanese I don't want to react to the same thing that happened in Egypt to be in Sudan and for me now we are on the stage that, that our revolution is is stolen away from us if we did not do anything about it. So they reached for an agreement that the military council will lead the country for 21 months, which is um, almost two years, and then after that, uh, we will have a civil government and it will lead the country for 18 months, and after that we will have election. But I knew, I knew, and I, 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 I knew that uh, the military council, they will not let the power in, in 21 months. They will just prepare themselves again and we will have another Umar al-Bashir just in a proof photo. And for me, we really had enough from being a slave for 30 years. So we are not ready to be a slave for more 30 years. We as a generation, and for me personally, as a girl who who had had born, who was born in uh, in Omar al-Bashir? Uh, I don't want my daughter to have the same scenario that I lived before. Those people, we lost them in the last uh, in the last uh, yeah in the last demonstrations. They were attacked, and not just the three of them. I I had more photos, but I just I took those photos. For me, um, there is videos and also photos about the crimes against humanity, but I didn't want to put it because it's really painful and I know uh, most of you, or for us, really it's painful, so I don't want to put it. But for the one who is interested to know more about Sudan revolutions and if you have questions or anything, please feel free to contact me anytime. And this is my email address and also my WhatsApp number if you want photos, if you want to know more about Sudan and what is happening. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me at any time. And thanks very much. I do appreciate this opportunity and I am I'm really glad if you were awarenesses to your colleagues, to your um, neighborhoods or to anyone, please let anyone know what's happening in Sudan and please let them know that Sudanese people are really suffering because we should be a machine, um, um, uh, like um, we should be as a one who is really transfer the information for each other because I know now our number is less than 15. But if if um, any one of you delivered this message to his colleague or to her colleague, then we will reach more people. Thank you very much again. Speak here or here? Yes, uh, all right. Um, I, I don't have any slides. On this. Um, I've been called in a short notice to fill in here. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to speak about uh, my dear colleague Nusaypa spoke about the what and the who. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit about the how. And you, you may ask yourself why now, why in 2019? we could finally get rid of 30 years of, of, of military dictatorship. And uh, I do believe there, is, there, there are two main reasons for that. The first one is uh, the rising level of awareness. Um, in, when when al-Bashir and his regime came down in 1989, uh, they systematically uh, brainwashed the whole country, more or less. Um, they, they changed the the education syllables, they change uh, what people see in, in the media, they controlled 100% people, they did not know what is happening outside. They were quite oblivious uh, to, to actually even in, in a different state. And, and 
with the time um, that changed with globalization, with people looking in the, in the internet, with social media, with many things. And, and we reached uh, a point that uh, it it's just was not right that we could live in what, what we were living in. The second one, I think, which was the most, one, most important one is organization. Um, and, and this may be uh, something that can be, uh, can be said of many things here in Europe also, when you demonstrate against, uh, yeah, against capitalist regimes or, uh, or, 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 or any other uh, institutionalized, uh, the same thing in Sudan. So what we learned from 2013, uh, my colleague mentioned in 2013, we had, we had some sort of a short relief revolution where 200 people died and it did not go for long. And why was that? Because we were not organized enough. So there was a spark, we went out, and then it immediately died. And, and in this time in 2019, what changed that we were organized, everyone was belonging to somewhere. And so you were looking for the people around you that, who could help with that. So one of the most uh, important thing that have been born within this revolution is, is, is committees for neighborhoods. So, so if you live, let's say, like in one neighborhood here in Amsterdam, and, and then the neighborhood will have, uh, will have some sort of a council and committee of people who are going in, uh, of protesters, and, and all those are, yeah, okay, a bit taller, I guess. Yeah, right, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so all these people, they, they, they just organized, um, I, and, and, and then the organization ran deep. So I'm, I'm very sure that every Sudanese person over here in this very room now was organized in at least one, uh, like one main organization for protesting, and they were helping by some means. I myself was part of one. I know that the people who were here were part of one. And, and through the, the collective uh, will of the people, that has happened because we, we started in the 19th of December and until the 6th of April, there were many, many nights I went to sleep thinking that the, re the revolution is dead. We are not going to make it. Next day, next protest, there will be just 100 people and that's it. And every time I was, I was surprised and that was because of the organization. Um, uh, the, the Sudanese Professional Association uh, they were and they still are our leaders within this journey. There is no denying on that. But they were, if, if I put an analogy, if uh, for like a, a, a medieval war, they were leading from the back. They were not up front. So, so when the sit-in, we said that people went out, they, 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 they stayed in front of the headquarters of the military council, and when they found themselves there, they said, okay, we will sit in, we, we, and then they called for it to be sitting, and then the, the SPA called for it. So they were leading from the back, they were, they were listening to people. And this was strange for us also. We never had a politician who listens. Uh, yeah, um, if, 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 uh, if, I, if I move, so this is the how to some extent, and, and, and the how has, has always been surprising us. Um, we didn't know that we had it in us. I personally didn't, I'm very sure if you speak to some of the people, we did not know that we had it in us, the Sudanese people, to go through all of that. And, and, and again, after the dispersal of the city in, in the 3rd of June, which was a massacre and brutal by any means, um, people usually shy away from going to social media, because if you see the, if you see the videos, if you see the, the photos, you, you will just, you cannot handle it. Um, and, 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 and then again, uh, the military thought that they, they broken the will of the people. And, and, and the reply came in the, third, in, in the 30s of June where six million people, and there's some estimation rise to 10 million people went out in the street. In huge numbers, in, in cities that I didn't know that they had that many population, to be honest. And, and, and this what, what led us to where we are now. So, so my, my colleague Nusayba spoke a bit about uh, the, the deal that has been reached. And I'm, I'm quite envious of you because she could make her mind. She said she doesn't like it. I cannot make my mind. I, 
till now I, I see the deal, I don't know if I am pro or against. Um, for one reason, for myself, um, I, 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 I don't think I can take another heartbreak. I cannot think that I could, I could see someone else die. And, and we have seen a lot, unfortunately, more than 200 people since December. And, uh, and if, if we took the other road that we, we, we will still, we will still, we, we refuse the deal and then we go, more people will die, unfortunately. This is just the, the sad truth. And, and if we take the deal, we make, uh, we make uh, some sort of uh, consensus with uh, a military council that we don't trust. Um, we, we know at some point they, they might just turn their back on us because they just killed us not long ago. So, so uh, yeah, so wh where we are now is, is quite complicated, uh, actually. And, but the, one of the main slogans of the revolution when, when, when it started that uh, revolution forever. So when people went out, they knew that it is a revolution forever. And, and, and the understanding that, well, it's by this deal, it's, it's not by any means it's over. So it's, if we keep doing what we are doing, we, we are going to prevail. I'm quite sure of that. Because the people who went out throughout all these four or five months, they, they, uh, they put so much of themselves outside of their souls uh, and their hearts. Uh, and, and, and if they didn't win, that means we just, the whole country will, will be, um, yeah, will be vanished. Um, I, I'm not worried a bit that we will go through the same uh, Arabic uh, uh, spring that happened when, when there the counter revolution uh, warning then. I don't think that will happen in Sudan um, for the reason the first I said, which is the awareness one. But uh, we should not by any means be complacent uh, and, 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 and say that it happens. Uh, from our side of Sudanese, from the people who are supporting us also, uh, there is still a huge deal of pressure to be done um, for, for all actors that support the, the, the TMC, the, the, the military. Uh, those actors can be uh, Gulf states, those actors can be the European Union, the Netherlands also. And, 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 and if we make sure that within the transitional period that we always put pressure over there, we, in the end we can prevail. Because the revolution we made, we need to uh, we need to guard and make sure that it it will reach its final successful destination. <laughs>